What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Now, some of you guys were asking me where's my Cotto versus Gill prediction, and I'm not doing one simply because it's not really a fight that I'm getting up for and I'm excited for, and I got other stuff I'm working on. But I want to make this quick video, and I'll give you guys some insight, but I don't even want to do an official prediction. Again, this is just not, to me, a fight that holds much merit to me. And then after watching the weigh-in, it's just it even further pushed me away. Like, there's some fights that I haven't been excited for, right? And then come closer to the fight time, I get a little bit more excited. But for whatever reason, Cotto Gill, I'm just not excited for. And I've supported all of Cotto's fights. I was even happy to see him come back versus Delvin Rodriguez. I was excited because he was with Freddie Roach for the first time. That was his new trainer. So I was wondering how that marriage and that partnership would be. Plus, he was coming off back-to-back -back losses with Trout and then before that, Floyd Mayweather. So it was a curiosity thing. But as lineal middleweight champion, you're not fighting like the people that you should, basically. You know what I mean? There's Peter Quillen, Andy Lee, Danny Jacobs. There's other guys at 54, Edislani Laura, Demetrius Andrade, K-9 Bundridge. I mean, Canelo, these are all good fights. So I'm just really... I'm not happy with this fight, and I'm not excited. Like I said, sometimes as it gets closer to the fight time, I get a little bit more jazzed and a little bit more pumped, but I'm really not. And one of the big reasons, like I said, is I watched the weigh-in, and to me, Daniel Gill struggled to make weight. I know a thing or two about fitness and making weight. I'll put the link in the description in case you want to watch the, the highlight clip from HBO. But I watched the whole full weigh-in, but that'll give you an idea. And... Daniel Gill just looks ghastly. He looks very gaunt. And again, I know I know a thing or two about fitness. Initially, I was thinking Cotto would win this fight by unanimous decision. But now I can even see a stoppage because I don't like how the early indications from Daniel Gill. There's very indi there's um, some indications that he failed or struggled to make weight, not failed because he made weight. One. He came in at 157 exactly, you know what I mean? The exact number, you know what I'm saying? Not like 156.8 or anything, the exact number. Two, he that's his lowest weight in eight years. A lot of people, see this is where, where I have to show you guys and try to drop a gym and give some expertise because a lot of people, oh, it's just three pounds. Three pounds mean something because it's not just three pounds. You gotta, you gotta think of it like this. You don't know what Daniel Gill's, starting weight was before like when he got the call said hey we want you to fight Cotto whatever his starting weight was he's 5'10 5'11 something right around there right let's say he weighed 187 so now he has to come back down and go to training camp and make 160 normally so to go beyond that threshold which you've been doing for the last decade or however long he's been fighting at middleweight and lose an additional three pounds by this deadline that's when it becomes hard because you're basically pushing your body and your body's like, this is as much as I have to give. And you know what I mean? You're pushing it beyond that plateau, beyond that brink. So one, two, three pounds can all mean something when you're already struggling. Like, you know what I'm saying? If it's already um, a challenge, if you will, to make 160, which I don't know if it is for Daniel Gill, but hypothetically, if it was already a challenge to make that weight now to go even deeper and lose an extra three pounds on top of that yes that becomes hard and this is the other thing a lot of people make comparisons but make apples and apples comparison people be like oh what floyd mayweather fought canelo had a catch weight true but canelo at the time when they fought was like 21 years old 22 when you're younger your body is more flexible you can do more things you can abuse your body you can run off of little amounts of sleep or do whatever you could just do certain things like i mean it, it's always been like this. This is just like random life, not even just boxing. Um, when I was a kid, I was very flexible. I could swing on monkey bars and, and be on a playground and doing like flips and, and all kinds of stuff like that. But now as an adult, can I do some of those same things on monkey bars and then swing upside down and then hold my body weight up and do handstands and all the stuff I could do when I was a kid? No. Same thing with being a boxer. It's the same kind of um, rules as you as you get older, your, your bones, um, basically you mature, you go through puberty and stuff. You might lose flexibility. That's like saying my voice is the same as it was in middle school. You know what I'm saying? That's what puberty is for different things like that. So making weight when you're 22, 
things you can do, like cutting weight and then rehydrating and still being fresh enough to fight, is doable. You know what I mean? I've seen Adrian Broner balloon up in weight, but he still, you know what I mean? He rehydrates and he, he still looks like he's fighting his fight. But when, when you get 34 years old and over 30 and stuff like that, that's where things start to change, especially guys who've been through wars, been through tough fights, been through several training camps. Um, Daniel Gill just recently got stopped, things of that nature. You know what I mean? He's one fight removed from getting stopped by Triple G. All those things you have to calculate. So the Canelo comparison is not a, a good example just because Canelo is so young, right? So there's certain things you can do at a young, tender age that changes. Like Oscar De La Hoya making weight, dropping down a division to make weight versus Pacquiao. That probably killed him at that point of his career. Even though Pacquiao jumped up two weight classes, it was easier for Pacquiao. He was still the fresher of the two. You know what I'm saying? And he was younger than De La Hoya. So it was easier for him to jump up two weight classes than it was for De La Hoya to drop down a weight class. You know what I'm saying? And it's all based on how much mileage you have on your body and stuff like that. But I didn't like the early warning signs that i seen from Daniel Gill. I see, I see there was all the indications that he struggled to make weight or this was difficult and the rehydration process is different for different people it's just like trying a drug or or being under the influence of alcohol or anything one person can drink and, and act normal and then the other person is ballistic and getting in fights and stuff like that so same with the rehydration there's no one rule some people can do it and, and bend their body like that and then they're cool then other people, when they even when they rehydrate, they're still low energy. Their punch resistance goes down even more. Um, they're lethargic and slow, different things like that. So I don't know how Daniel Gill's going to look, but I don't like the early indications. And judging by all the criteria that I have, like his age, recent stoppage to Triple G, it's not looking good. You know what I'm saying? And then on top of that, Cotto came in really light at 153, which is weird that the lineal middleweight champion is weighing <laughs> under the um, junior middleweight limit. You know what I'm saying? This whole thing is just stupid. I think Cotto, like I said, like I've been saying on the channel, should defend or drop the belts. This is a defense, but it shouldn't be a defense because they're fighting three pounds under the limit and there's game challengers at 160 who all want to crack at Cotto. You know what I'm saying? Golovkins, I'm sure David Lemieux, Hassan Nadal, all them dudes. Quillen, Quillen may have ducked like Triple G. I don't know if he wants that type of fight. But if you call Quillen right now and say, hey, you want to fight Cotto? I guarantee you will fight him. He's a smaller man. You know what I'm saying? Not out of disrespect, but I'm, I'm guarantee you, Peter Quillen, I see why people want to avoid Triple G because he's looking like a monster. But, I mean, all these dudes at middleweight, the top level guys, I'm sure would would fight Cotto in a heartbeat. So it, it's just this whole fight. It just hasn't excited me. And like I said, I don't like the red flags that I'm seeing from Daniel Gill. You also notice in men, um, look at their face. Always look at their face. You could tell weight loss by their face. Here's a picture of Daniel Gill in the Triple G fight where he was weighing at the regular 160. And then here's a fight with uh, Miguel Cotto. And you can just see his face looks more sunken in, thinner. Also, he looks tan. And some people are, oh, what do you mean he looks tan? Why? Who cares? He just he went to the tanning salon, man. Like, the reason I care is because I know fitness. And the thing is, when you struggle to make weight, when people are weight draining and stuff, some of the indications are their complexion. Some people look like translucent and ghastly, like ghosts. Look at Brandon Reels when he was struggling to make weight. He looked like skeletal. You look at his cheekbones and stuff, look like they're about to po He looked like, uh, what's that Angelina Jolie movie with uh, Maleficent and shit? That's how Brandon Rios' cheekbones look. Um, that's an indication that paper tissue looking skin is an indication when people just look like translucent, transparent, and, and really like pale and stuff like that. All signs that they may be um, weight trained. I mean, it looked like, to me, it looked like Daniel Gill was ready to fall over. Like, even when he's doing the stand-in, it looked like he was weighing. Go just watch the, the link in the description. It looked like he was swaying as um, he's standing with Cotto. I don't know. I just didn't like what i seen. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a stoppage. I'm not doing an official prediction. I don't. I'm going to watch it, but, I mean, hopefully Daniel Gill rehydrates 30 pounds and, and, and puts up a good fight. Um, that's all I got to say. Make sure you like my video as always. Hey, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is Ego signing off. Victor, you a punk. I seen a little funky ass interview. You said that I owe you. I don't owe you shit.
You on me. I gave you that payday. I'm from Grand Rapids, motherfucker. I would to choke your little silly ass all the way back to Kansas. Easy work. Uh, you're literally talking to a tree, bro. It's been a while, but after seven years, seven long years, I'm ready to return to face Triple G. He was born ready. Hey, Forrest Gump, is he serious? I fought Oscar Mexican style, not for future. In addition to coming out of retirement, I'm also dropping a new album. Don't call it a comeback. I've been here for years. I'm rocking my peers. I'm putting suckers in fear. Making the tears rain down like a monsoon. Listen to the bass go boom. Oscar gonna knock you out. Yeah.